You said there were two incidences. Um, one you didn't remember about the devil talking to you with regard to your friend. But then there was the time when you said you were getting really serious and your friend just felt uncomfortable around you. Were you aware that you had made a shift in your thinking that was making people uncomfortable? Um, not really. Like, I was aware that something, like, I was aware that I became more serious in things. But I wasn't aware that I was pushing people away. And I didn't know it was affecting my relationships with my friends. Or with my friend. Mm -hmm. But you were aware that you hadn't been spending as much time with him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you were making these videos that you were putting up on YouTube, mm -hmm. you said you were doing voices and stuff just acting silly because you know yeah. like you, people do on YouTube that wasn't yeah. that wasn't like being possessed or something you were just acting silly in that regard but yeah. um, the the content that you were putting up there about not doing steroids and that sort of thing did you ever do steroids never never ever did steroids never never tried it once never <clears throat> You know, I asked you earlier that there was this theory about Flocka, mm -hmm. that you had somehow taken Flocka. Do you know what Flocka is? Is it, is it a crystal or something? I, I don't know. My dad told me it was a crystal or something. Have you ever taken Flocka? No. You didn't take it the day of the incident? No. Have any of your friends ever taken Flocka? No. Do you know anyone that's ever taken Flocka? No. Have, have you ever have you ever seen the drug itself? No. Is there any chance anybody could have slipped that drug into your food or into something you drank or poisoned you with it, contaminated you with it that day? I drank a uh some tea at Duffy's, so I was told, so but, I, don't, I don't think they would poison me or anybody would poison me. Right. Others drank there too, and they yeah. had no reaction, right? Yes. Um, so when this tox screen comes back, they're not going to find those substances in your tox screen, correct? No. No. And um, so there's just and you've you've heard of bath salts right you mean you've read yeah. about that and heard about it. have you ever taken anything like that no so never there seen it. never seen it have you any of your friends ever taken it no uh huh so there's just no way that has anything in your opinion there's just no way that has anything to do with this incident or what took place huh. yeah you say when you left the restaurant that night, the night of the incident, yeah. that when you left there, were you confused or were you thinking straight in your opinion? I don't remember thinking at all. I just, it's like a blur. So, <clears throat> so I, I, don't, I don't think I was thinking straight. And how long was it after you left that you saw Daniel? Um, was it 10 minutes, 30 minutes, a mile away, half a mile away? I think uh, maybe five minutes from the house. So uh -huh. I don't know how far <clears throat> it would have been. Okay. But well, right when I saw him, I panicked and tried to get help. Were you running or walking when you saw him? Uh, I think I was running, but I don't have a clear memory. Mm -hmm. Take me through, and I'm, I mean this is just from your experience, and there's no right or wrong answer here. Just from your experience, take me through the moment you saw Daniel. 
what went through your mind when you saw Daniel? Um, like when I saw him, it wasn't like a clear person. It was like a dark figure because it was like pitch black outside and I couldn't really see it. But I heard his voice distinctly and like when I saw him, I just got scared out of my mind. Mm-hmm. But you, did you like, know it was him by his, I'm sorry, did you know it was him by his voice or by his, the visual? By his voice. Mm-hmm. But you did see a figure. Yes. And what did the voice say that scared you? It said, A. Austin. Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, okay, there we go. Okay. He, he just came off, and I just got scared for some reason. Uh huh. It just like I, just, I guess it just scared me to see him, like all of a sudden. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And it, it's what you knew about him from before that scared you. Yeah. Uh, he didn't threaten you that night. It's just him being there. Yeah. And what did you say to yourself? I need to, I guess, I need to get, need to find someone to help me or, like, figure out where I'm going. Mm-hmm. So. I don't, I don't, I don't really remember <clears throat> what I said to myself. I just remember being afraid and being scared. So you, you, you panicked at that point? Yeah. Did you run? Yeah. Uh-huh. And so you ran down that street, and is that when you saw the open garage door? Yes. Do you remember when you took your clothing off? Was it before you saw Daniel or after? I have a, like, I didn't remember it at first, but I have a faint memory of taking my pants off at some point before I saw Daniel, but, like, I I never realized that my clothes were off later, like, Mm -hmm. like, it's it's hard to explain, you know? Right. It's, it kind of runs together for you. Yeah. When you ran up into that garage, um... And the woman was there. Were you running to her for help? Yeah, I I don't think I ran up to her. I think I just, I think I just screamed at, and then it's a blur. But you think it was just your voice? You yelled. No, I didn't. I don't think I yelled. I think I just was. I just showed up, and she was shocked that I was. Um. I guess almost naked, but I mean, I I understand that, but I didn't know, I didn't know I was not clothed properly. Right. Um, Do you remember the first thing that she said? No. I don't remember what she said. Do you remember? I just remember being yelled at. Do you remember what happened next? Not, no. I, I don't, I don't, like I have some memory of what happened, but I don't remember how we got in, into the altercation or into the fighting. I don't, I don't remember do you remember her husband coming out? Yeah. Uh huh. And do you remember what he said? No. Mm-hmm. And y- you said that you had a machete at that point. Do you remember where you got it? I think somewhere in the garage. I don't. I think in the left left corner or something I don't know uh-huh 
do you know why you picked it up? No. Uh-huh. I think, I don't know. Uh-huh. And was there a time during this incident that you realized what was going on? No. Was like, there... Go ahead. Like, I didn't... Like, it's like... It's like it happened, but I, I don't... It's like it's distorted. Like, it's, it happened, but... Like, I wasn't aware of it at the time. Like... I remember, like, at the end, I remember leaving a dog hijacking their car. You remember leaving a, seeing a dog in what? Saving a dog and hijacking their car. Uh-huh. And then it's a blur. Right. Um, have you seen a picture of this couple uh, yes. since the incident? Yes. Um, when you, s- you saw that picture and realized that these were the people that this has happened to, how did you feel? I felt terrible. And I really, really don't have words to explain how I feel. It's like, it's like a nightmare. Is it hard for you to imagine that you did this to these two people? Yeah. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Or I never imagined that this would ever happen. And I'm deeply sorry to the family that was affected. And I hope that something like this never happens again. I. I didn't ever want to consciously do something like this, or I never planned it, I never, I didn't want to do it, and like, I don't know, I don't know what to say. If their family members are watching this right now, what do you say to them? Look into the camera right now, and if they're watching, what do you say to them? I'm sorry for their loss, and I hope that you can find it in your heart to forgive me. And I'm so sorry, and I never wanted this to happen. (laughs) I'm so sorry. It's like a nightmare. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't know how to say. I don't know how to put it into words. <laughs> Austin, are you ashamed of what you did? Yes, yes, yes. I just wanted to let them know that I'm so sorry. I can imagine how it must feel to lose a close relative. And it was what happened to me. I, I wouldn't know what to do, and I would be so sad. 
I just, I'm just so sorry. Did you leave? Did you leave that restaurant wanting to hurt anyone? No, no. Why did you do it? I don't know. I don't know. If I knew, I would tell you. Do you think? You, what? Do you think you're mentally ill? I guess so. I didn't know though. Did you want to hurt and stab the neighbor that came running over? No, I didn't have any memory of that. I don't, I don't, I only remember him yelling at me. Well, the report is that you severely wounded him and stabbed him multiple times and he's, he's critically wounded. And he heroically, he heroically tried to save those people. I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember. I think, from what I hear, Dr. Phil, he, he was slashed with a liquor bottle, broken liquor bottle, and he wasn't critically wounded. I'm pretty sure it wasn't critical. Well, I think, well, let's just say he was severely wounded. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't remember fighting him or stabbing him. It was all across the back. Right. I don't remember how my hands got like this. Mm hmm Well, we certainly don't mean to minimize or trivialize the injuries that happened to him because he certainly was just trying to help yeah yeah and and i'm certain that you're sorry for yeah. that yeah I'm, I am deeply sorry for him mm -hmm. when um when you went in that garage did you drink something in that garage that you found there I can't talk about that. Uh huh. Um, you, you had severe burns to your esophagus, right? Yeah. And do you know what caused you to go into a coma? I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know at the time, but I guess I know now. Mm hmm. And what have they told you caused you to go into the coma? Whatever I drank. Okay. And, and this, still, yes. Wait, go ahead. Wait, go ahead. The psychologist is coming up in five minutes. Okay. All right, we'll be done by then. You just tell me when we need to click off, okay? Okay. You felt like you had some superpowers and that you could read people, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, did you ever remember putting yourself in harm's way by stepping into traffic or anything like that? Um, well, when I was walking alone to my dad's house to get my car, I remember like, like walking in front of cars and stuff like that. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. So, in looking back, you recognize that there has been a period of time, yeah. weeks, even months, that you have been losing touch with reality. Yeah. That you've had paranoia, that you have had ideas of, of grandiosity, superpowers, being worshipped, all, I mean, godlike sorts of things that have gone on yeah. with you. And this wasn't something that just happened one night. This was something that's gone on with you for a period of time. Yeah, I guess so. And 
should the courts decide that you were in need of, of treatment, that would be something that you would lean into. You, you recognize that you, you need help and treatment, correct? Yes. You wouldn't resist that, whether it was neurology in terms of your brain, psychological treatment. Um, no, I wouldn't resist that. And, and you know that your dad and I are, are working very hard to get the proper diagnosis here because putting you in a cage and sitting you over in a corner is not going to heal what ails you. We need to find this out. And that yeah. doesn't mean that we're trying to excuse or trivialize the horrific things that happened to the people that got caught up in this. Yeah. We're not trying to trivialize that, but by the same token, we don't want to throw your life away either. Yeah. We, your dad and I are going to work very hard to get to the bottom of this, and I've, I've pledged that to him, and he's pledged it to you. And, Thank you. All right, so you, you keep you keep hanging in there and we're going to keep looking for answers here okay okay and I, I i thank you for for asking me to call you i'm glad i did and just know that you, your dad and i are standing shoulder to shoulder here working on this thank you all right thank you dr bill thank you wade we'll talk to you soon all right all right bye